Again, yeah. yeah. Last last week I had a heavy low low ache, so the I'm 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 recovering now. Okay, uh, this is Mans. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, this is a nice visit to Singapore. Yeah, even I had only a little bit more than twenty four hours to stay. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to talk about the Ruby after 24, 25 years, and. Uh, uh, this is the, the stripped down version of the, the keynote speak in the Ruby, Ruby Elixir Conf in Taiwan this, this March. Uh, the, so the, some of them might hear that, that talk in the conference or maybe from, from YouTube. But, but you, get, you have to stand and then prepare the question for the, the next QA session. Okay. Uh, I have to put the, this small dongle. <laughs> To the to the laptop. Yes. Uh, the, this year we celebrated the twenty fifth anniversary of Ruby. Uh, the Ruby was born in uh, nineteen ninety three, uh, February twenty fourth, nineteen ninety three. Uh, this this is the day I picked the name Ruby. It's not the date I release it, or no, the, the it's not the day I started coding it. I just named it Ruby on that day. So the, in Wikipedia, so the, the, for the programming languages, it, it recalls the, uh, the release date of the language, and which is, it doesn't work. <laughs> Oops. It is the, uh, December 21st in 1995. So the, Ruby project was started in 93 and then the release in 95. It is, as, actually it is as old as Java. The Java project was started, uh, which is the, the, it's the original name is Oak. And uh, the project was started in 93 and uh, the, the first white paper of the Java programming language was released in 95. So the Ruby is actually as old as Java. It's the same age. So the, what's wrong with it? <laughs> so that she has just turned 25. So the, the 25 years ago, we wanted to name it after Joel, just because we have the programming language named Pearl. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, I was a uh, little bit, I used a little bit of Perl and mostly shell scripts. So that, you know, the, I wanted to create my own programming language and uh, the, the, comp the, comp the language compiles to the, the native code is quite difficult. You know, you have, you have the knowledge of the platform and as long as the knowledge of the, the native code, so that, which differs from CPU to CPU. And, uh, uh, the, the, oh, having overcoming that, that obstacle, you know, the, the beating, you know, com competing to the, the C compiler is quite difficult. So that I, just, I just gave up that, that path. So that I just created the, some kind of the interpreted programming language. So that I created scripting language because, you know, Pro, Shell and Perl scripting languages are the second, second most used programming, uh, programming language I used in, in 25 years ago. And uh, the Perl was pretty famous for scripting language. And remember that 20, 20, uh, 23, year 23, we, we didn't have the Perl 5. So it doesn't have any object oriented programming language feature. So, the, so I wanted to the better programming language than Perl. Yeah, and all the, we have the rumor about the Perl 5, which should have, should have uh, the object oriented feature. But uh, the, the, the object, object feature of the pro programming language is a little bit awkward, as I say. <laughs> so, the, so I created the object-oriented scripting language. So, the, so we wanted to name it after Joel. And uh, the, the, we had two candidates, the Ruby or Coral. But uh, Coral was longer. 
in one character. You know, the, it should be the, the, name of the, the name of the program so that you have to type every time. So that the only one character difference make uh, tons, of, tons of times of the type in, in combine. So the Ruby is shorter and more beautiful. So we pick Ruby. Ruby is shorter and more beautiful. And then Ruby was more precious. Afterwards, we found out very interesting coincidences. The birthstones, the, the pearl is the birthstone of June, and then the ruby is the birthstone of July. Huh. And then you, you might know the font names, you know, the, the real font, physical font, has the, the name according to the, their size. So the five-point font has the name Pearl. And the five-point five point, the next big, bigger font, has the name Ruby. So the, it is quite sufficient name for the next Pearl. Uh, the next Pearl was the, our primary goal at the, at the very early stage of Ruby. Uh, I tried to make Ruby, the language, as useful as Pro, and as strong as Pro, and uh, to be honest, we went too far. <laughs> uh, present day, we are not no next Pro. Uh, it's next Pro is Pro six. Uh, in fact, it's next to Python, or it's following Python maybe in some aspect. And uh, it, it is quite difficult to, to imagine the future. So now, 25 years ago, it is, it is pretty difficult to imagine the, the present day. Like, a Ruby is used worldwide? No way. <laughs> so the, the prediction of the future is always hard. Uh, to, so did I foresee the current popularity? Definitely no. So the, you know, there is tons of programming language out there in the internet. So that we have, I don't know, maybe tens of thousands of programming languages out there. And then most of them uh, stays, uh, they're very unpopular. Very few people knew, know about the language. And then it, they uh, gradually disappear in the history of the internet. So, uh, but, uh, in some coincidences or maybe some accidents made yeah, Ruby very popular. Uh, the, the predicting the future is always hard, difficult for anybody. So the, it's okay to be irresponsible about talking about the future. So the, it's okay, I'm going to talk about the Ruby after 25 years, okay. the, about the future. So the, we, the trend now, is the scalability. Uh, that, you know, the 25 years ago, the computer was pretty weak. Uh, the, I, I used the, the Unix workstation, which is very, very expensive, uh, but still, the, the power of the, the computer is pretty much weak, maybe, maybe 100 times weaker than my, my, my laptop. It's quite, you know, the clock, the first Unix workstation I worked with, uh, I developed Ruby 25 years ago. It was the, the, the CPU was the Motorola the 680K, 68K, and uh, the memory was, I don't remember, a few megs of memory. And then the hard drive was, 180 megabytes of the hard drive. It is, it is nothing compared to the, the, the present days. Well, everything getting bigger. So we have the terabytes of memory, uh, the terabytes of the, the, the storage that in, in my laptop. And then in the server, we have, I don't know, the the petabytes of the storage the, the collectively in the data center and the memory was you know, the one, maybe one host had the 64 gigs of memory 
it's far bigger than my my hard drive back then. <laughs> so the everything get bigger. And everything, the data size is bigger, uh, traffic size is bigger, program size is become bigger, and the team size get bigger. So uh, we have to fight with these sizes. So the, this is the this is how we work on Ruby three. The next major release. It's it's kind of the, our fight against the future. The, we have three major uh, goals: the performance, concurrency, and the static analysis. The performance uh, performance is pretty much important for for the language uh, Ruby. Of course, Ruby is slow compared to say C plus plus or Java because you know it's interpreted. It's it's run run on top of the virtual machine, uh, but but no one complains about the faster Ruby. So that, you know, we, we enjoy the productivity of Ruby and the succinctness of programs. And then, but still, if Ruby runs as fast as, say, Java, that's okay. So, the, so the, if Ruby runs faster, we process more data, or we process more traffic. So that we can fight with these sizes, and then, uh, and then these days, the, the single core, the, the performance of the single core would not be improved because of the say the, the limitation of the Moore's law, uh, because you know the you know the circuit in, in the our CPU is so teeny, so that. You know, if we design, uh, if it, uh, the company, the Intel company uh, designed wrongly, so that the chip will be burned. So too many, too many heat there. So that we have to, they have to put uh, many cores in the, in the tip, in the chip. So that, uh, so that means that we don't have the faster core, but uh, Instead, we have many cores in the in the chip, in the chip, so that we have to utilize the concurrency to to accomplish the the performance. So the, the these cores, the, utilizing these many cores, we can handle more traffic. And then the, by providing the, the way to strat static analysis of the program so that we can uh, fight against the, the pro size of the program. The, the team, size of the team and the size of the software is getting bigger and bigger so that to fight against these sizes, uh, that we have to provide better way to find bugs and uh, uh, the test. So the performance, performance and concurrency in the static analysis is the, the three major key to the Ruby 3. So the, the by performance, we have the project named the Ruby 3 by 3. So that means that Ruby 3.0 will be three times faster than Ruby 2.0. Uh, let me explain a little bit about that. So that we are not going to have the big jump toward the Ruby 2x and to Ruby 3.0. So that we are adding new features to Ruby 2x, like uh, we have added a new garbage collector to Ruby 2.2, or maybe we added some kind of the incremental garbage collector in Ruby 2.4, or we had added uh, some kind of the, uh, the JIT compiler to Ruby 2.6 uh, in, in the current version. So that we are going to release the, this Ruby 2.6 in this December, coming in December, so that means that you will enjoy the JIT compiler next year in it is. Or, or you can try it right now by downloading the, 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 the trunk, the very the leading edge version. Uh, the, so the, the performance will be improved every year, so that compared to Ruby 2.0, Ruby 3.5, the current version, the recent version, runs I don't know, 20, 30% faster, then it the, the consumes the, I don't know, many, many times uh, fewer memory, less memory. So that we have improved that much. So that 
we want to measure these kind of improvement into that this kind of rule three by three. So it's not easy, but uh, you know we need the, the difficult goal, like uh, you know the President Kennedy in the 1963, so that he made uh, some kind of announcement to to bring human being to the moon, and then at that time of the the year 63, it is nearly impossible. But he declared, we go to the moon, we go to the moon. Because of not easy, it's easy, but it's difficult. And it's a huge technical challenge, but by having that kind of goal, the, in uh, July 96, July 1996, the three people went to the moon and they're standing Walking on the wall. 16. I, I didn't, did I say 69? 96. I'm sorry. 69. 69. <laughs> 69. July 69. Oh, yeah. I remember I watched that on my TV. And then most of you haven't been born. <laughs> anyway, uh, that this, this kind of goal is Ruby 3 by 3. And then. Uh, by having goal, miracle happens. And then last year, a guy named Vladimir Makarov, who is from Canada, who was born in Russia, and then, <laughs> yeah, he, he is, he is employee of the Red Hat, and he's in charge of the, the development of the GCC for the last 20 years. And he's the very expert, nearly genius, of the, the compilers. And then in RubyCai 2017, last year, and he uh, presented about the MZ, which is comes with the, uh, the RTL, RTL, if it stands for the Register Transfer Language, which is the, the technology behind the part of the GCC, and MZ, which is the, uh, me, the stands for the method Z. So that, uh, it is kind of silly though, uh, it, it is a Z compiler, that means that uh, MZ generates the C code in the, into the file corresponding to the Ruby programs, Ruby methods. <laughs> then it kicks GCC or C clan to compile these uh, generated C files, then wrote those five compiled functions by the DL open uh, dynamic loading, then run it as a native code. It's kind of a silly idea. And he implemented that. And it did run fast. <laughs> so that he implemented the, the just-in-time compiler using GCC in the realistic way. It, it was, yeah. Actually, I was jokingly talk, discuss about this kind of the, the, the approach, but uh, you know, I, we just gave up. It, it's, it's kind of silly, but he, he was serious, and he implemented that. I was, I was so impressed. Uh, it's compiled by GCC. And, uh, but uh, one drawback is he implemented a new virtual machine, a whole new virtual machine. LTL is, itself is assigned to the register-based uh, bytecode, so that he implemented the virtual machine and its compiler. And uh, it's, the big problem is the big jump. So now replacing the virtual machine and the compiler at the same time is too huge. So that it is quite difficult to debug the things. So that it is, you know, the, the, his MJ runs some small Ruby programs very quick, pretty fast. But it, it doesn't, it cannot, it, it couldn't compile the, say, Rails programs. And the Rails, Rails application is huge as a whole. So that it's too big. So that the it is hard to it was hard to be stable, and it it was hard to keep compatibility. So the the, the other guy Takashi Kokubun uh, implemented the the MZ, which is the replacing uh, LTL by the current virtual machine bytecode. So the it's not fast, it's workable. So that 
the country he is working on improving that, and uh, the, we have tons of the rooms to improve the performance. So that the next Christmas you are going to have the Ruby 2.6, which comes with the JIT compiler. You don't expect the performance that yet, but uh, we have tons of rooms to improve it. So that in the future we have a lot of uh, chance to improve the performance. Uh, then, so that, you know, Brad, who originally developed MJ, so that he, you know, the part of his work, MJ part, the, the compiler framework, a JIT, JIT compiler framework was taken, but uh, we have to give up the, his very important uh, RTL, uh, RTL part. So the, uh, he tried again in uh, this Ruby conference <laughs> this year. He came back and uh, he, which one? Okay, uh, I made a mistake in the slide. Okay, let me see. We will see the JT in Ruby 2.6 next Christmas and uh, you can try it with the uh, dash dash jet option so that you download the trunk version so you put the dash dash jet so that the jet compiler will work and a very a simple software like a, like a, the, the native naive loops runs pretty fast but a, in a complex program like Rails application will okay it, it, it runs somehow <laughs> and uh, yeah and the Brad came again I uh, tried again in Rubicon 2018 comes with the new technology like the MIL, which stands for peace in Russian. And then that means right widget. So that in the in the more the very compl uh, complicated the language implementation like uh, the V8 or maybe the the Firefox uh, Firefox uh, JavaScript implementation, it has the many layer of jet. So that he has the lightweight jet, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, you know the the problem with the M jet is the very it is very uh, heavy to compile everything by the invoking C compiler, so that we try to reduce the the burden, but it's still heavy compared to the built-in uh, the jet compiler, but. Uh, the mill is very lightweight, uh, way, lightweight JIT compiler. And then it, it only supports the, uh, the X, x86 and the ARM, but uh, it, it is quite lightweight so that you can build M. And uh, it is not fully optimized, but uh, it runs anyway. So that, and the compile time is 10 times faster than MJIT. So that maybe we can have Mio in the future version of Ruby to implement the more lightweight, more faster Ruby. So JIT is not panacea. Uh, it improves the CPU intensive task, but if the bottleneck is not CPU, it doesn't help it, uh, the performance at all. So that don't expect too much. So that. I don't, I don't say that every Ruby program will run very fast in using Z, but uh, uh, CPU intensive tasks like loops or maybe uh, the, some, some kind of the text processing or things uh, will be very fast. Well, maybe the net, if the bottleneck is the database connection or maybe network, the, it won't help. Okay, concurrency. Yeah, as I said, uh, concurrency will fight against the traffic size, and uh, we have the multi-core and many-core these days, and the multitasking. The multitasking is over-evaluated. For example, the Node.js uh, the claim to be very fast, but it's uh, sing single-threaded. So the the real the we we might not need the real uh, multi-threading in many cases, but uh, a at least we have some kind of the CTU intensive multitasking. So that in that in that way, so the the, the real multitasking will help. 
So we have a language named Elixir and Elgon, which has the very uh, concurrent virtual machine. And then, or maybe we can have the multi-process, the, the up, the up to the, put up the everything, every multitasking into the operating system like uh, the Linux or maybe the Windows or something. So that the, these kernels can easily handle the multi-processing. So the, the bottleneck of Ruby programming language is GL, which stands for the giant interpreter block. So the, <laughs> uh, which is the, uh, the Ruby basically runs one thread at a time because of the safetyness. Uh, what? <laughs> because of the safetyness. Uh, you know, the, the thread shares memory, the, the thread shares object and the sta status. So that with multi-threads uh, accessing the same, same object at the same time, the, the, it's quite difficult to keep the consistency. So that to keep the safety, so that we, we need to have the giant interpreter lock. So that it is quite easy to remove the, this giant interpreter lock by modifying the few lines of code of Ruby virtual machine, but the US software will probably crash. <laughs> the the zero is for your safety. It's safer, but it's slower. So the, we have two ideas. One is the auto fiber. As the the as say as Node.js did that, so that we have the IO for IO intensive works. Uh, so that we have the very uh, quick uh, context switching is required. So the fiber is much lighter than threads, and it's much it's much easier to to uh, understand. So that. So the auto fiber is the IO uh, context switching by IO and it's still the fiber so that the, its overhead is much much lighter. The, for the CPU intensive tasks, we are going to implement uh, the guild. The guild is the uh, little bit different uh, abstract of con concurrency and uh, we are not, I'm not going to the tell you about the detail, but uh, the Koichi Sasada, which is, who is the VM guy, is the, in charge of it, and he's got uh, the diligent tree working on it. So the, we can, probably by using this kind of the, the higher level abstraction, we can go even further, say cloud-based FAS, which stands for the function as a service things. So that by using this kind of the, the guild stuff, you, you can build up the, the very efficient uh, Ruby function as a service. So that, or maybe highly distributed tasks. Uh, static analysis, oh, it's, it's almost, almost all of the time. <laughs> so the Ruby is optimized to the small teams. Uh, concise, abstract, or flexible. But uh, after Ruby on Rails, the software is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, dramatically, the Ruby on Rails itself is dramatically is the development by providing web abstraction, but abstract view of web development. But uh, abstraction is the key, but uh, as a team get bigger, a code get bigger, it, it'd be hard to, harder to maintain. Then, then the people require the static typing, like uh, to JavaScript, people uh, approach the, the coming rays of the TypeScript or something like that. But I don't like that. <laughs> because the, the static typing is not dry. So that if a program works with the types, so that we should not be able to omit. We should be able to omit them. I don't, I don't know this, this and things, but I'll forget about that. So that the types is the key, but I don't want to write type, something on the type declaration of things. It's, it's, it's redundant. <laughs> so the, the people named, uh, the, the guy named Sotaro Matsumoto, uh, and uh, he challenged static type inference in Ruby in his, his PhD thesis, the paper, but uh, he proved it's nearly impossible. 
<laughs> the, uh, after his graduation, he tried twice and failed. <laughs> so the, the type inference, the, the type, traditional type inference does not work for Ruby. So his new challenge is named Steep, which does not infer types most of the cases, but uh, uh, Steep requires type description files, like a, like a type, TypeScript does. So the, yeah, imagine dot d dot ts file you know, of TypeScript, then Steep checks type integrity. There are two ways to provide type description. So the, uh, the type description file and the comments. I'm not fully satisfied with it. It's, it's still redundant. <laughs> but uh, the future is also, but uh, providing uh, these kind of uh, the, the type description file, we, I think we can just extract this kind of type description from Yahoo documentation or maybe type inferences or the uh, runtime type aggregation or the abstract interpretation, which we call it AI. Yeah, Ruby, get, uh, Ruby generate the type information from AI. Yeah, sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, runtime type aggregation means that you, you write tests, right? Yeah, and then you run tests, right? So that by running a test, you have the, the type information of the, the method of the class. And then we, once we run the test correctly, after gathering these kind of type information, so you can generate this type of information to the, the type description files. So runtime type aggregation. And then the or maybe they, if you have the, some free running, uh, running software, by tra the virtually tracing the runtime call path, so that you can gather the type information, basically, this, which, is, which is we call the abstract interpretation. So the, by running, running, by evaluating this abstract interpretation, you can gather this kind of type information that from that kind of type information, you can generate the type description. Once you have type description file for every method, every class, so that you can have the static type check using the technology like Steep. So that, that means without, running, without writing any type annotation to the, to the your code, so you can statically check the type of your software. That would be nice. So the, uh, at the beginning of the Ruby 3 project, this is kind of like a, the, the dream, a kind of impossible dream. But the, having research, having experiments, so the, now we have the, uh, the, these things, these great things, including JIT compiler, including the, the higher abstraction, uh, concurrency abstraction, and this type of inferencing things, uh, the type, we call it type guessing because you know, type, by using the term time inferences, the type theory people will, <laughs> will be get mad. So that we, we call it type guessing. Anyway, uh, that this kind of static analysis is nearly possible in the future, maybe a year, a year or two. That would be wonderful. So we will have the Ruby 3. It will, the performance will be improved by using MJIT and other technologies, and, uh, and the concurrency in the Guild and the Art Fiber, and the static type analysis using the Steep and the other the, same, um, the, the software analysis things. So that, that would be great. So we will have Ruby 3. It, it, it will be the con continuous evolution we will have. So the, the remember, so we will uh, continue the, the incremental development. So that we are adding feature by year by year. Ruby 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. So that we are not going to have some kind of big gap between the Ruby 2 and Ruby 3. So we are not going to have that kind of gap between Ruby 1.8 and 1.9 or Python 2 or Python 3. We are not going to have that kind of big gap. So the you know, the, just we keep improving the language, uh, the value in the, the keeping the compatibility, so that we are not we we are not going to have any the, that kind of compatibility hell again. So that 
you know, it's kind of the, the division of the community. So that some people keep using the old version, some people keep using new version. So that the the, the half of the community stay old version. The the uh, giving up the new technology, new performance improvement, and new functionality or anything. So that kind of things. I, I well, I'm, we are not going to see uh, see that kind of situation never again. So that uh, we well, uh, it's it's out of time. Say. So our goal is help us accomplish great things. So that we simply simple Ruby code, and then simpler, safer, and more enjoyable. So that uh, you know, seven, ten to seven years ago, Ruby was hot. Everyone is was everyone was excited about a new technology named Ruby. It's actually it was not really new though. <laughs> but anyway, seven years ago, uh, ten to seven years ago, everyone was excited about new technologies. But these days, no one excited about hearing about Ruby. Okay, Ruby, I know Ruby. Yeah, but uh, you know, the Swift is new. <laughs> or oh, Rust is Rust is great. Uh, yeah, that's true. But still. We are, we are keeping improving the language. We are trying to keep Ruby great. So Ruby is great, I believe. Yeah, you agree? Yeah, I'm forcing you. <laughs> and uh, Ruby is great, in a way. It's not hot, but uh, it's great. And uh, I, I, we try to keep the Ruby great. Keep Ruby great. And, uh, in, and improve it. So applicable to not only web, or maybe to, for the, to the DevOps things, or maybe to the, uh, say, uh, the embedded field, or maybe in the, some kind of the general purpose programming language, or even to the, the research computing or the data science things. You know, I know there are you know, the more popular language in those fields, but uh, by keeping uh, compatibility, by keeping moving forward so that Ruby can be applied everywhere, so that unless other other factor uh, happens, so that uh, I want Ruby to be your first option to the technology of the technology. Uh, so it's it's I spend too much time, I guess. So that yeah, but, okay. Uh, in Intel, only paranoid, the, the, the profile says only paranoid survives. I'd rather be a paranoid to, to survive. So the language comes and go. Like a, we had, we had Fortran, we had Cobol, but uh, you know, these, these languages still survive. But uh, the, no new programmer enjoy learning these languages because they're old. They're, you know, abandoned ancient programming language. I don't want Ruby became like that, become like that. So that we will do everything to survive, to keep providing values. So that oh okay. So to make programming fun again. Okay, thank you. Oh, there we go, one question. Hi. Uh, so, uh, these issues, or like these, uh, these uh, tasks to improve performance, improve concurrency, yeah, yeah. Uh, this also happened for other languages. Uh, do you keep in contact with other programming language creators like Widow Parosum or Fairness <laughs> or Sup or uh, any other? Uh, no, recently. No, recently. I have met uh, Guido or Lollywall or maybe uh, to the last month. Uh, but uh, it was t more than 10 years ago, so that I haven't uh, talked with him recent with them recently. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Actually, it's a fun story. In a, uh, the open source convention held in Poland uh, ten, more than 10 years ago, we had a, the language designers lunch. The, the O'Reilly organized the language designers lunch. The, the Lali wall there, the Guido van Lassen there, 
the last month's levels was there, and I was there. So the, the, we talked about the community management, or maybe Unicode. Unicode was a very hot topic back then. And then, and then, then one of them talking jokingly, okay, if someone said put the bomb in this restaurant, the whole <laughs> open source community will be <laughs> suffer tragedy or something. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> Any more questions? I think people are shy. Yeah, oh, Alex. <laughs> so on a related note, do you uh, how do you make Ruby continue to be relevant? Because there are uh, different languages, new languages coming up. Mm -hmm. Do you look at the language constructs from other languages, mm -hmm. or how do you kind of like keep keep it fresh? And did you see them as competitors? Yeah, uh, I be, before being the language designer, the, the designer of Ruby, I myself I consider myself as a language geek. So that I I'm pretty really interested in programming language in general, and I pretty I like to uh, research about the programming languages. So that if when we uh, when I saw the new programming language. I try to read about the materials, the, the reference, and I try to line, uh, write uh, some very teeny sample code in, in those languages. And then, and then I, I look, ho look for the, the source of the inspiration so that I might, there might be a chance to steal the ideas <laughs> from the, those languages. And then, yeah, the language designer, uh, yeah, as you, as you, uh, I told about the language designers lunch. So the, the the you know the language designer, the creators, are, the relationship between the creators of the languages are very good, and they exchange the ideas. So I took some ideas from Perl and Python, and then I I think I Ruby has some kind of influence to the, the newer language like Elixir and uh, Groovy, or maybe some some part of the influence to the Language like Swift, and then that I we pretty uh, much value those kind of the exchange of ideas and uh, to make better programming languages. All right, one more question. Uh, hi. So for the from every from Ruby to the tree, you mentioned that one of the biggest improvement is going to be performance. And you mentioned that you will be hoping that you can be on par with Java, but even Java itself has been criticized as a bit slow like <laughs> nowadays, because it's still running on the JVM. And then you have new languages like Go, which is trying to go on par with C in terms of speed. So, uh, what's your take on this? Uh, you know, the, the, the fully compiled programming language like Go is not our, re our real competitors. Like, uh, the, you know, the Java has having the, the virtual machine and JIT compiler, the Java is kind of the, the, the competitor. But uh, you know that the behind Java, we have tons of researchers in, of the, with the PhD and, in, in IBM and Oracle. So that it's quite difficult to compete, but uh, we are chasing it. So that we try to make Ruby fast anyway. So that, uh, for the people who is very eager to seek the performance, so that we, the, there are technology in the Grau, which is the new, ver new implementation of the virtual machine technology, and then the Truffle Ruby is the, the Ruby implementation on top of the Grau virtual machine, and then which is, runs pretty fast. And actually, the, uh, the Truffle Ruby runs, say, 8 to 12, 20%, uh, 20 times faster not 88 person, not 88 to 20 person, I mean, 8 to 20 times faster than the C Ruby, which is quite fast. And then, you know, then some the J, J Ruby people is jokingly claims that, okay, J Ruby, J, Java, uh, Ruby on top of the Java technology runs, to, uh, we already surplus the Ruby 3x3. Three three. <laughs> anyway, yeah. And uh, yeah, that uh, irritates me a little bit, though. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, yeah, using uh, those kind of technologies, Ruby runs fast. And uh, but uh, 
The point is the keeping compatibility. The Truffle Wheel still, uh, still cannot run Rails application, so that they are improving. One of the things that I hear you saying in your last couple of answers is the <clears throat> like comparing against Truffle Ruby and Graal or comparing against Java on top of the JVM. The virtual machine in both those cases is fairly mature and highly very highly performant. It's they're they're both particularly Graal designed with performance as a primary goal. Do you see the idea, of, you sort of danced, in the slides, you sort of danced around the idea of, well, replacing the, replacing the VM and YARV and the JIT compiler all at once is too big a jump, but how committed, how likely do you think that it is that Ruby over time will continue to depend on current YARV as opposed to one of the other backends. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is it is not a mandatory to use the YARV forever. So that uh, the when the first MJ came in, so we tried to replace the YARV, the virtual machine with the out here VM. But uh, it, the keeping compatibility for the, the, the language like Ruby is pretty much difficult. You know, the, remember the, the 20, uh, I don't remember, so that some years ago when we replaced the, the, my, the my, my interpreter by the YAV, so that at, the, at that time we have tons of Ruby virtual machine implementations. So that we have five, six of them that you know, tried. And then, it, the everyone but one YAV was failed. The YAV stands for yet another Ruby version machine. So that we have the you know the handful of other uh, Ruby version machine implementation. This at, at least attempt attempts. But uh, the the keeping uh, the the implementing the compatible uh, version machine is quite difficult. Only one person succeeded. So that I try to repress it. So that if it, there is a chance to have the RTL become a chance to become a hmm? chance RTL to become a, the mature the compatible virtual machines. I, I we'd glad to be replaced them so that we have no no fix fix rule. Yeah, but uh, probably we'll stick C mostly because we we don't like Java. <laughs> We don't want to maintain Java programs. Okay, uh, we have one question at the back, so it'll take me some time to get to you. I, my question for you as a language designer, more like uh, what kind of languages do you prefer? Those kind of languages who try to uh, tell to the developers you only can do this with one way and and we say this is the proper way to do this because we saw a lot of other developers who who failed with another way to do that for example like uh, a Golang uh, does it or or you prefer more like the Java way when we are trying to give you uh, uh, tools as, uh, as much as possible we can give you because we trust you you are probably a good developer uh, other languages. It's it's quite difficult to name uh, one language. So or maybe that we have. I have to name the every language out there. And uh, the the la uh, the language I I value most. I I study most is Python. Mostly because the, the, our, our domain is so overlapped, so that we face similar uh, issues and similar problems. And uh, so that we. Uh, we might make, we had make, made uh, different decisions and uh, we are making a uh, similar decision or making different decision in similar problems. And then uh, I, uh, so that 
I studied uh, many of the PEP, the so Python enhancement proposal or something. And then, yeah, the, these kinds of uh, things are very uh, worthy for me as a language designer. And then, uh, the, the other source of inspiration is, uh, the, say, I prefer Go. So the Go is, I, I'm, I'm a C programmer, so the Go, I consider Go as a better C program, programming language, or maybe the better system programming language. Uh, in that sense, I prefer Go to the Rust, and then Rust has a different approach to the system programming. And uh, I very respect their decisions, but uh, I, actually, I myself don't want to write uh, the you know the big big application in Rust because it's the type type bookkeeping is a little bit tedy for me. But uh, the, I respect the approaches. Uh, what else? Uh, I study uh, Elixir programming language, and then I I have communication between the the the, the creator of the Elixir programming language, uh, uh, the Jose Valim, who is all, who also is a the Rails committer, and then and and I actually I discussed with the design of the Elixir programming uh, programming language in very early stage, and then so that. You know, the some part of the Elixir it reflects my opinion. <laughs> okay, and then yeah, I have a lot of other programming language out there, and then I actually I yeah I like most of the programming language out there, including very old ones like APL. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Do we have any? We have time for one last question. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, you mentioned earlier that um, you, you you thought that Ruby might not be that hot anymore. So I'm just a curious thought. What language do you think is hot right now? Uh, I mean, aside, aside from Ruby, of course. Cause... Uh, <laughs> yeah, hot programming language. Okay, probably a uh, probably a Swift is the hot programming language, and then uh, and uh, you know the it. It's not the language itself, but the, the the JavaScript domain is hot, I guess. You know, it it keep hot being hot because of the you know the generation change of the the frameworks. The, you know, I visit uh, JavaScript uh, time to time, and every time I study JavaScript, the the mainstream framework is different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the it, I have to relearn everything again, again, and again. You know. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry for the JavaScript developers. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you so much, uh, Mats, for coming out. Uh, yep. We have a small token um, to present to you. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much for coming down all the way uh, and speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. The photo sessions.